Hello and welcome back to the How to Get an Analytics Job podcast. In this episode, I wanted to break down the biggest lesson that I learned in launching the Greensboro College Analytics Apprenticeship Program earlier in this year. So just to give you a quick update, we've officially wrapped up our first cohort and all of the participants who finished the entire program have landed at least an offer. Now, if you've been following the podcast for a while now, you might have caught some of the episodes where I've been talking with Gavin and coaching him through the entire process. So if you're curious of what the apprenticeship coaching might look like, go check out those episodes. So Gavin's applied for well over 250 jobs, has had six or seven interviews, and two or three offers. In the next upcoming episode, we're going to break down the killer offer that he got. The personal branding is one of the biggest things that I harp on over and over and over again. But there's something that underlies personal branding that is kind of a subtle detail. And that concept is building a narrative. So when most people think of personal branding, especially in the analytics space, they're thinking, well, do I have a Tableau public portfolio? Do I have all the keywords listed in my resume and my LinkedIn? Um, do I have a SQL portfolio? And hard skills are definitely part of the overall personal brand that you're trying to build. But there's something underlying it, which is the narrative that will actually get you through the job interview and to your offer. So building up all the skills will help you land the interview, but having a solid narrative about who you are as a professional will get you through that interview and into your first job. And what I've learned about the apprenticeship program is that a lot of people are struggling with imposter syndrome. So they don't feel worthy or they don't feel quite ready to jump into the analytics space. So what I see time and time again are people just completing certification after LinkedIn course, after YouTube video, and they're spending hundreds of hours spinning their tires and just acquiring new skills. What you need to be focusing on to really break into the industry is building an effective professional narrative. So what this means is you need to really critically think about who you are as a professional the experiences that you've garnered over the years, stack that with your skills and your future goals, and that's where you can start to think about the jobs that you wanna focus on, applying for, and how you're gonna talk about yourself in an interview. A lot of this is kind of nebulous and a little bit non-concrete. So let me break you down how I actually built my own personal narrative. So you've probably heard this story if you've been following the podcast for a while. So I got an MBA with a concentration in analytics and I turned my last internship into my first consulting client. They were willing to pay me $30 an hour. And this is because, well, number one, they were anchoring on the fact that they had worked with me for the past three months as an intern where I was still getting my MBA. So they kind of saw me as someone who was very fresh to analytics. And I think I was worth quite a bit more than 30 an hour, but it was my first potential client, so I took it on. Now, what I did, or what I have done over the past five years, is I built out the analytics infrastructure for this company. So over the past five years, they've grown from around 175 million all the way up to 250 million. So that has been an awesome journey just to see the company growing and then also expanding on the initial analytics infrastructure that I built for them. So over the three month internship, I actually pitched the president of this company that, hey, you guys are doing all of this manual labor in Excel or analytics work. What you should do is figure out how to turn that into an interactive dashboard and that way you only have to un update the underlying data source. It's gonna cut down on your overall costs from employees, it's gonna be much more time effective and it's also not going to be prone to any human errors. So once you get the overall dashboard set in place and you don't tinker with it, it's pretty much going to work. Now there are situations where it may break on occasion, but they've been paying me on a retainer base for the past five years to make sure that you know nothing major goes awry. So what was interesting about that is a $30 an hour consulting rate is extremely low for consulting. About a year into consulting with this company, I pitched maybe my third or fourth client 
and I pitched $175 an hour. So this is where I can kind of get concrete with how you can craft your narrative. So in company one, they saw me as a recent intern. So that was the narrative or the frame in which they were seeing me as a professional. Oh yeah, John David's great. You know, he's still a student. He's done some really cool killer tableau work and he knows Excel very well. Um, I think he's worth 30 an hour versus a year into consulting with this company where I've built out the entire analytics infrastructure within Tableau for a $175 million company. When I'm sitting in to pitch this third or fourth client, I have complete control of my narrative. So they don't need to know that I'm currently consulting at 30 an hour, but I can show up to that pitch meeting saying, oh yeah, here are the major wins that we've had within this company. And one of the biggest wins I've had with that company is we took a look at their pricing strategy and we found through the work that I've done around a $5 million under optimization within their pricing structure. So I can take that huge win and bring it in to the pitch meeting with the client. Now, of course, I'm not going to show any of the proprietary information, but I can tell that and own that story of well, number one, I built out the analytics infrastructure for a $175 million company. That's a huge win in and to itself. But then I can actually quantify the impact of the work I've done on that one single project of $5 million. So it is kind of absurd when you think about, I'm getting paid 30 an hour for something that might be worth upwards of $5 million for this client. So how does this story around narrative relate to you? Well, last week I was consulting with a graduate student who's about to finish up in, the Dece in December of this year. And she has a pretty killer resume and she has three or four different analytics jobs underneath her belt. Now this is where the narrative comes into play. With all of those four different positions, she just listed out roles and responsibilities. And in that coaching call, we dug into those different roles and started to suss out, well, what is their return on investment from you as a resource for the company? So one of the line items or one of the items within uh, one of the job postings was uh, we, we optimized a process and went from paperless to automatic. So the way that we can quantify that is, so let's say four people work on that process and it takes them two hours a week. Each of them are making $60,000 a year, which backs into $30 an hour. So what is that? Two times 30 an hour times four times a week times 52. Uh, I'm actually not that great at math off the top of the cuff, but let's say that's a $100,000 insight. That is what needs to be in your resume. And you need to start thinking about what are the outcomes or the major wins that I've had. Just to recap, you need to start thinking about what is your professional narrative arc. But if you can logically and critically think through what are the impacts of the work I've done in dollars and cents and start putting that into your resume, it's going to shift the way that you see yourself and you're going to start creating that narrative. 